Good morning, everyone, and I and welcome to Ask the Expert. We're going to get started in just a second. I am so excited that you all are here with us on this morning. So let's just give our viewers about 30 more seconds to tune in, and we're going to get started with Ask the Expert, August 26, 2020. You're on mute. I, I know I'm not going to hear the end of that when um, I talk to Darren. <laughs> 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 well, he's just waiting to find something on me, but you know, dude, I am I'm way ahead of you. Today. I am so glad to have you all with us on today. And so I just want to introduce you guys really quick. I am going to come back and read your, your bios and everything. I'm going to give you a formal introduction. But if you've been following Actor Expert for a number of weeks now, you know, we always start with um, the mystery question so that we can kind of break the ice and give our panelists a chance to check their microphones, make sure that everything is working properly. And so we're just going to dive right in. I'm not going to give them a chance to back out. We are going to go ahead and get started. Let me do one more housekeeping thing. If you have someone that is not familiar with Zoom or they're not able to get on Zoom, let your friends and family know that they can watch us live via YouTube. It's streaming now. So if you want to shoot someone a quick text message, tell them to go over to the AK Legacy Foundation and find us on YouTube and they can watch the broadcast as well live. So I'm going to just get started. I, I, I don't want to waste any time. I'm happy to have our panelists here with us. And so we're going to start with the mystery question. Our panelists don't have a clue as to what the, the mystery questions are. And that's the fun thing. You know, sometimes we, we get so systematic, we forget to be spontaneous and have fun. And so I'm going to be in charge of creating that on today. So we're going to start with the Vanettes. So the mystery question, you got to pick a number between one and four. You don't know what the questions are, but I do. So pick a number between one and four. Uh, we'll start with you, Darren. I'll say four. All right, four. Should we pray about it or be about it? I say definitely pray about it. <laughs> You gotta say pray about it. And so I guess the question is, um, I, I know the person that asked the question, so I know they kind of say, we always want to pray about everything. Why can't we just do something? So can you tell us a little bit about why you say pray about it? Well, you know, prayer is basically communicating with headquarters. And when you realize that your life is not your own, if you're a believer, then you realize that your primary responsibility is to stay in touch with headquarters, and that's what prayer is. All right, thank you. Getting in touch with the headquarters, getting the direct answer. All right, Lady Keo, we're gonna go with you. All right, pick a number between one and three. Since you're okay. Taking. Which one? Okay, two. Two, okay. All right, two. Two. Hmm. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, the question is, is there such a difference between why is wait let me read it again why is there such a bad um can't read this person right hold on why is there such a bad take on the word grind and hustle i, I guess they mean why sometimes when we when 
Oh. In the kingdom, we say grind and hustle. Some people have some kickback when they say that. Well, when you think about grinding and hustling, um, hustle just has a ne negative connotation anyway, um, because it, it, especially in the kingdom, what it infers is that I'm trying to make something happen. And um, sometimes, you know, um, by any means necessary, but in the kingdom of God, you know, like Pastor Darren just said, and, um, you know, pray about it before you, you, you be about it. Um, you, you know, you, you have to, you, you have to allow God to do his part. And a lot of times when we're grinding or when we're hustling, we're trying to do or take on more than, than it's for, for us to take on and to do. And so, um, and, and that having that spiritual balance, it brings balance when you have that connection with headquarters that um, you don't have to grind, you don't have to hustle, you have to walk in faith. Okay, all right. Thank you. All right, Miss Courtney, you're, is it time for you to pick your mystery question number one or two? I'm going to go with number one. All right, number one. All right, let's see what it says. It says, in doing business, should I consult my pastor in my business, uh, in my business doing? Wow, that's a, that's a touchy one. Should I consult my pastor in my business doing? I believe the scripture fully and those that walk in the counsel of the godly are blessed. And so when it comes to running your business, if your pastor is your spiritual counsel, which I hope and pray that they are, then you absolutely should consult. But I would like to add a caveat because there are a lot of women of God who are business owners and they have husbands. I refer to mine as the bishop. So I consult the bishop when I run my business. And if I have to take it a step further, then I'll seek counsel from my pastor. But when it comes to to godly wisdom, absolutely. If that's your source, if that's your leader, then you absolutely 100% should, because the Bible says we're blessed when we walk in godly counsel. All right, I like that. Um, all right, so I like that. Uh, I uh, That is so awesome. We had, I don't know if you guys watched a couple of weeks ago, I had my spiritual parents on, my pastors, and we got into one of the questions was um, a young lady overheard me ask my husband, could I do something? And, and I was asking um, in a sense of reference and honor, but she took it as I was asking him for permission as in a, a school kid. And um, I didn't, I didn't, we weren't in a setting where I could explain that to her, but I could tell she was like, you know, she kind of saw me here and she to see me ask my husband, could I do something? She was taken back by that. But I find that so interesting that Ms. Courtney said that because I believe that we should, if you're married, you should consult your spouse, whether your man consult your wife, wife consult your husband, because every decision that we make, it affects our spouse, whether we, whether they're involved or not. Um, sometimes we have silent partners, so you can say our husbands may not actually work in the business or our wives may not work in the business. And then um, like the Burnett, they actually work together. But sometimes when the spouse is a silent partner, some couples forget to consult one another. And so that is so very key that you said that, especially in business, because everything that we do does affect our spouse, whether we um, want to admit to it or not. So I think we're off to a good start. I'm excited. So I'm going to go back now. We are going to properly introduce our guest. Um, I just like to do the icebreaker question to kind of give everybody you know, a chance to relax sometimes. Just me, myself, I'd be nervous. I'm so excited about the Burnett being on, on the show, on the webcast, being here with us. Um, I could probably go on and on and on, but I know this is probably about an hour show. So I'm gonna give you guys the short version. I have met, I met the Burnett in 2018. And I tell you, um, my life and my family life has been nothing but forward since. Um, I believe that I've heard somebody say one time people come into your life for a reason or season or, you know, or for whatever the case may be. But I truly believe that I met them at the right time when I was in a position to receive. Um, had I met them 10 years prior, I may would have missed it. So God is good in all that he does. He's 
he um, aligns everything the way that it should be. And I met them at the right time. And I have been on the increased path ever since. And so I'm going to read their bio so I don't, you know, I don't, I don't wear makeup. And I've been wearing my mask out or talking about them. But um, the founders, um, the Vinettes, they are the founders of K Kingdom Business Leaders, Darren and Kiera work with individuals to identify their values in relation to faith, family, finance, and fitness. The Bennett's have developed a system that walks through clarifying the life purpose while putting practical processes into action, resulting in increase. The power couple truly believes in the, in the, cow, the power couple truly believes and operate in the gifts of unity, integrity, and love for others. So welcome to our um, guest panelists, the Vinettes. And so we're going to now um, read the bio for Miss Courtney. All right. Miss Courtney just has that smile like, hey, I got this. You can trust me. I got you. I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, you learn a lot about a person um, through their smile. Um, you know, if it's a welcoming, um, inviting. Courtney and I still haven't met in person, <laughs> but we have crossed paths. Uh, several different times. We actually were in a, in a virtual conference back in March, and we, we both got a chance to speak at the conference. And, um, and, and ever since then, we just kind of had a connection because I could tell that she was concerned, not just about the finances, but she was concerned about the person wholeheartedly. And a lot of times people don't even know that they're being watched or, and when I say being watched, it's not like we were just, you know, scoping her out. It's just that when you cross people's paths, multiple times and in different settings, you get to see if they're the same always. And so I, um, I'm glad to say that that has been the case with Miss Courtney on every platform I've seen her in. She has just been Miss Courtney. And so, and I love it. I love her personality. And so we're going to um, go ahead and read her bio and properly introduce her. Courtney joined Edward Jones for the opportunity to serve as a bridge in her community. She always enjoyed serving and educating, and now is able to combine them in her work with Edward Jones. Through Edward Jones, Courtney is able to work with the individual investor by partnering with them to build financial strategies that are unique to, unique to their goals. Ms. Peyton works to understand what, what's important to her clients and work with them throughout their life to, keep, to help keep them on track. And that is so very key that she is serving as a bridge because that is one of the main purposes of Ask the Expert. So I'm just going to give you guys a quick snippet of why we are here. Um, that leads right into it. Um, Ask the Expert is something that was birthed out of the AK Legacy Foundation. This gives us an opportunity to bring information to our community, whereas they may not normally be able to have the opportunity to do so. It also gives our panelists an opportunity to show the human side of them. A lot of times when we patronize people, businesses or their services, we tend to forget that there, are, that there are people that have issues and struggles just as we do. They just have had the opportunity to survive through it and they're, they're here to tell their story of how they prevailed. And so prayerfully, we'll take the information that they share with us today and we'll apply it. And in and, and doing so, and as they share and as we learn, we get an opportunity to talk about the AK Legacy Foundation and the work that it is doing in the community. Um, we, are, we are founded on just making sure that we have financial literacy. It is so key. So I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more about how you can get involved in the AK Legacy Foundation a little later in the webcast. So our first topic for this discussion on today we are just going to go ahead and get started. The first topic is going to be in the area of faith. Our audience comprises mostly of business owners. Um, so if anyone is watching the replay, this is still a business development webcast, but we're just going to take it a little further. And so um, our first topic is going to be on the subject of faith. Where has COVID-19 taken our faith? And that would be in the faith as far as our communities, our family, our businesses, in whichever arena you want to share with us on today. So Courtney, you go first and tell us um, how has COVID affected our faith? That is such a loaded question. And I feel like every believer can answer it differently. But I think the main thing that COVID has done for Christians and Christian business owners and Christian business owners, individuals and alike, is really put the rubber to the road when we say we walk by faith and not sight, because running a business doesn't look like it did eight months ago. 
um, building your bottom line doesn't look like it did eight months ago. And so for even the business owner who might not even be a person of faith, quote, unquote, COVID-19 has taken their belief in their inner ability to do what they believe they're called or supposed to be doing to a completely different level. Um, we talk a lot in my business about not having a plan B. Faith is the plan A. COVID-19 has taken that plan A faith and put it on steroids because now we really have to move in what we say we believe. This is what mm -hmm. I'm called to do. This is the work of my hands that the Lord has placed me in for this season. So I believe, as crazy as it may sound, that COVID-19 has served as a set of, of weights for our faith, and it is causing us to, every day we get up, to put our feet to the ground. It's causing us to lift that COVID-19 weight. I got to get this done. I believe this is what I'm supposed to do. I got to stick to the strategy. I feel like this is what God says for me to do. I got to do it, even though I can't do it the same way I used to. So COVID-19, for me and for a lot of people that I know, has taken their faith to a completely different level. And not in a bad way, but in a growth way. It's strange to say or even to think that a virus could grow something when viruses are supposed to kill and destroy. But for the kingdom, I truly believe and I have seen that COVID has grown the faith of a lot of the people of God and a lot of business owners as well. That is so true. The growth, I mean, it's just like a, it's unexplainable. And, and I know by the time COVID-19 is over, we're going to have a ton of books on how COVID has <laughs> propelled us. So if you have not started documenting your experience, um, shame on you. If you have not grown any during this process, really shame on you. Um, this has truly strengthened my faith and so I can speak for a whole lot of others. So we're gonna give our panelists, um, I would like to hear from each of you, um, I'm Darren and Kiara. Okay. Um, I, I'll say what I said um, to my husband when the pandemic first started. I told him um, that we're going to see who's really been praying in secret. And so when I say that, um, when we talk about faith, there are people who's, whose faith has grown. And then there's people who we're, we're seeing who we're going to see a fall on the way. Or in some instances, we've already seen a fall on the way from, especially when we're talking about um, you know, uh, purpose and, and walking, walking in your, your kingdom destiny. You know, a lot of people, um, a lot of people have been given lip service and saying, okay, you know, this is what I believe. And then I'm, I'm, I'm walking, uh, by faith. But the truth is, you know, um, those who I, I believe that, that really have been, um, seeking God have, have sought him harder you know, during this time, when it, when we first, um, I, I know everyone on this panel doesn't know, but I mean, my husband and I, we've experienced two floods. Our home has flooded twice since the pandemic started. And, and there are some things that um, we have, some challenges that we have faced that if we hadn't been seeking God in the way that we were prior to, um, prior to those floods, but definitely since the, the, the start of the pandemic, then I don't know how, what that outcome would have been. I, and when I say that, I don't know how we would have handled those circumstances and handled having to be displaced, you know, for, for several weeks or handled it when, when our neighbors were looking to us for counsel and for guidance and for inspiration. And so, um, so what, it's, what the pandemic has done for us is you know it's it's caused us to to you know like my sister Courtney said you know um, to exercise and to grow you know in our faith and 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 strength has been calling to strength and and so we're seeing some things um, manifest in ways that we never imagined but it's because we stayed steadfast COVID caused the faithful to become more faithful. Darren, what's your, what's your take on it? Well, where has COVID taken our um, faith? Um, it's, it's, um, it's quantum leap, my personal faith, um, where I was struggling maybe to achieve a one level of faith. I mean, the quantum leap is like I've gone from first grade to 12th grade 
in trusting and believing God. And I believe it was because in a lot of areas, um, you know, um, I think what's the word? I think it's called resistance training. You know, when you go into a gym, they force you, 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 you exert adverse pressure to force you to grow. And I believe it's forced clarity, forced priorities. It's caused us to force to focus on the kingdom. And what's also important, it's like in a state of emergency, a state of crisis, people begin to focus on what you call uh, essential workers, essential supplies. And so in the same realm of faith, you know, we've had to prioritize the, you know, our faith in order to sometimes survive and all other times to thrive. And um, so I believe that it's, it's been a, it's been a God ordained divine disruption to cause us to focus on what's really important, get rid of the riffraff and, um, you know, focus on what and who and, and who, what's important as well as our priorities. Yes, and two words that I heard throughout of that is priority and focus. Um, it has caused me and my family to focus on the priorities. Um, I know a lot of my clients that I speak to, you know, it's like now they just want the, they need the emergency essential services. Everything else is that we would, um, that some of them were doing um, for the limelight, they were no longer interested in. They were like, look, look at the heart of the matter. What is it that I need to survive? And I know Courtney could appreciate that. A lot of people that planned for the just in case um, were, were uh, th are thriving right now. And then some are being forced to come with their emergency plan, your evacuation plan. Um, those of us that are here in Louisiana, I know you guys are watching from all over the U.S. Um, thank you for that. But here in Louisiana, if you don't have an evacuation plan for a hurricane, you, it's almost like you're just waiting to drown because it's inevitable. You're here in this, this bowl as they speak. And so a lot of times in business, a lot of times business owners, they didn't plan for cases of an emergency. And so um, this has truly defined your faith. What have you been doing in the quiet times and the closet time as um, Kiara had mentioned? We're gonna find out who's been praying and then we're gonna also find out who's been praying now. If you wasn't praying prior to COVID, okay, so now you come on, get on board. We're gonna find out who's been praying, who's been putting in the work and who has been planning. So, all right, so our, um, and so we're gonna go into our next topic um, before we go to a little break, but we're gonna go into our next topic, family. This is gonna be interesting. The mindset culture you know, in our personal and in our business. I am going to um, start with Kiara on this one, personal. <laughs> we're we're going to give her the personal one. So family, the culture of the mindset in relates to business when we're dealing with our business endeavors. Um, I hear a lot of uh, on social media, you'll see, especially for the millennials, they'll say, um, I have strangers patronizing me more than my family. Um, it's a shame that my family won't even click on my website, um, you know, and they're just kind of looking, it's as if they're disappointed that the family is not supporting them as much of a total stranger would. So could you explain that a little bit? Hmm. <laughs> well, the Bible says that um, a prophet is without honor at his own, in his own home. And the truth is a lot of times, um, we we look to get things from people that and they don't that they don't have the capacity to give to us and what i found um really just in 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 walking with god and, and in loving god is that everybody one doesn't understand that but then also some people just want to wait to see what if it's really god and if he's really going to come through for you and, and in that, you know, God gives us assignment. And I've learned, you know, over, over the years that um, family isn't just blood. You know, he's shown me that he's given me kingdom sisters, kingdom brothers, kingdom mothers and fathers that um, when my own family forsook me, you know, the Lord took me up and he gave me a community, a family of God that was able to give me what it is that I needed, the support I needed, the, the, the hugs, the, the what have, have you that I've needed to, um, to, to thrust me forward to that next dimension. And so, you know, if anything, um, I've learned that, that, that um, by, by the spirit, what we, that covenant that we have with each other through the, the, in the spirit realm is stronger and even, even it, it supersedes the blood relationships 
And so those blood re relationships, we pray for them. You know, we, we um, you know, pray that God would open their eyes, but we don't wait for them. <laughs> we don't wait for them. We'll, you know, they'll catch up at some point, but we have to go forward with God. And a lot of times, you know, he'll, he'll give us the covenant sisters and brothers that we need to, to link with us and to push us forward and to walk with us through those, those times where, um, you know, we, we are vulnerable. So he's never left us or forsaken us. It's sometimes what we have to do is just look, look around and, and look to see who, who our help is coming from. It may not come the way you think it's coming or from the who you think it's coming from. Right, true, that is so true. Um, Darren, you hold your thoughts. I'm gonna come back to you on this same question because um, I got a particular question I'm gonna ask you in mind, but I wanna give Courtney an opportunity to speak first. Um, so Courtney, um, give us your spin on the culture um, of the mindset for personal and business relations. A lot of times when people are trying to bring the business into the family. Um, you know, in my particular business, I have found, and it's just really the hard truth, it's not, you know, not anything against a particular person, but a lot of times your family and your business just don't mix. It just kind of <laughs> is what it is. And I think that we ought to, you know, you talk about those posts on Facebook when people say, my family doesn't do this, my blah, blah, blah. You know, ask yourself, who who are you doing this for? And um, Ms. Kiara said it, you know, people tend to expect more of others, you know, expect a lot from their family. And I have learned that I had to adjust my expectations. That's the first thing. When you are doing what you know that the Lord has called you to do, you have to adjust your expectations accordingly, which brings me to the next caveat. Who are we placing the expectations on? Are we expecting God to bless our business or are we looking for particular people? And when we adjust our expectations and put the burden of making it come to pass on the one who called us to do it anyway, then I think we might not be so so touchy-feely if our cousin don't want to buy the dress that we're selling for $10 or if our uncle does not want to burn our candles in his house. You know, it's not a personal hit. And I think we have to learn how to draw that line because ultimately we can cost ourselves the relationships that are otherwise valuable and vital in our family because we mix and we really just shouldn't do that. Adjust your expectations because while people may lack capacity to do for you what you expect of them, God doesn't. Right. Put the expectation in the right court and it will come. And I, and I fully believe we have to continually pray about our own mindset because that's where the battle is fought. It's invisible. And so there's so much at stake when you're running a business and you have the mindset of my family has to support my business. They just don't. And sometimes they probably won't. And that's okay. Adjust that expectation. Move forward. Take the personal piece out of it just for a moment. Still be cousin. Still be sister. Still be auntie. Still be friend. But if they don't support your business, that's fine. God gave you that business. He'll send you the people. And don't be bitter about it. You want to be blessed, not bitter and mad. You don't draw people with that. You draw them with honey. Don't have no attitude. <laughs> <laughs> right, we we didn't, uh, Courtney, didn't, she, she's like, oh my goodness, if she could just have a dollar for every time she has had this conversation, I can tell she's passionate about her answer. And one of the things that, um, that, that I, um, I, I see a lot of times is sometimes in our families, it's got to be honest, uh, I can only speak for me and for what I can, you know, what I've seen, Sometimes it's almost as if God reached down and snatched us out of the craziness that we were in in our family. Some, some families just wasn't exposed to business. They didn't have the conversation. They wasn't talking to anybody at Edward Jones. They wasn't going to um, um, business coaching. So they just haven't had the opportunity to even be exposed to what a lot of us have been blessed to do. And so when they see us doing these things, they're, they're a little nervous maybe, to patronize us because they don't really know where in the, they can't see how in the world we're doing what we're doing when they're not realizing that God did it. It wasn't us. It's, it's God did it. And so, like you said, don't be bitter, just be blessed and, and be welcoming to them. And so Darren, this leads me to the question that I have for you. That's why I wanted to give um, Courtney an opportunity to speak first. Um, because some of us did not have the culture of business 
talk to us. We weren't exposed or we're just not ready to patronize our cousin's business or whatever the case may be. You have developed a safe place for business owners to have support. So tell us a little bit about that, the culture that you have, um, that you and your wife are working on. Well, um, you know, it's amazing that you said the word culture because the word culture within itself, the root word of culture is cult, C-U-L-T. And we've always had a negative connotation toward the word cult because we've seen it and use it in some weird people doing some things that are ungodly or out of God's will. But culture, the root word cult, is just nothing about the accepted behavior with a certain set of people, and in this case, family. And so every family has a culture. Every family has a way that they say this is okay and then this is not okay. And so I think the first thing we must understand is that understand the purpose of, of your family. You know, um, just like I, Courtney said it so well, she said that, you know, God gave you that business. Well, just like God gave you that business, I'm going to add on to that. He gave you that crazy family, <laughs> if I would put it that way. And so when we understand the role of our family, we understand that they are actually preparing us to be launched into our purpose. So they're supposed to trip out. They're supposed to reject you. They're not supposed to support you because your family is actually fostering a simulation of how it's going to be in the real world with real clients and real demons and real um, people in the boardroom who are um, angry or, or fearful or jealous of you. And so when we understand our family and the role they're supposed to play, then we could actually appreciate them, you know? And so, you know, we, having said that, you know, we realized that um, my wife and I, that we wanted to establish a culture and environment that fosters not only entrepreneurship, but um, self-esteem, healing, you know, hope, help, and healing to the heart that's hurting. And so um, that is our kingdom business leaders. And so I'm, I'm so grateful that not only you are part of it, but so, so many others. And we, I, didn't, I, I didn't want to be a part of another network. There's nothing wrong with networking. But I wanted to create something that I believe that would raise up an army of believers as bout, I said bout, B-O-U-T, bout, run them after the devil. And so we are very humble and we're very meek, but don't cross us the wrong way because we are, we are spiritual gangsters, <laughs> we, right. you know, and we're not, you know, the script, we, we sometimes forget that Jesus is the lamb, but he's also the lion. Mm -hmm. And so our culture that we create in Kingdom Business Leaders is about um, helping you first identify who you are. You know, now I'm a pastor, but my favorite topic and message is if you need to first find out who the hell you are, because when you find out who the hell you are, hell's going to tremble. And that's what we teach kingdom business leaders, um, that you need to first identify who you are. And then when you find out who you are, then you, then you can understand how, why people, and, and, and I'm going to say like this, and I'm going to stop. But, you know, I always say popularity is when people like you, but happiness is when you like yourself. And so when we create a culture where it help people to find out who they are and they like themselves, they get healed, they get a whole, and then hell's going to start trembling. And so that's what kingdom business is. But we're also about equipping them with the tools. You know, one of the, some of the challenges, that every, people have different challenges. Some people need accountability. Some people just don't have the money. Some people just don't know that what they don't know. They don't know what questions to ask. And so kingdom business leaders is just a culture that we've created. We're a community. I mean, you know, and in that community, we have all barbers and doctors and whatever. And so we just create that community where you have a level of, account a level of accountability. Uh, and we have a community where it's not about money. Money is secondary, you know. You know and so uh, does that kind of explain what you were looking for? Right, right. And, 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 and because I know some people haven't gotten to that point to where some of us are, where we know to not look to our family per se. And so some people still need some type of support a validation to know that they're not crazy for the idea that they launched out with because they didn't have a exactly. model to follow. And so um, I do believe that, um, and I guess I can be a little biased, uh, <laughs> Kingdom Business Leaders has done that um, for me. It has given me like, okay, it gave me a, a way to check myself like, okay, yeah, you're not crazy after all, because we, we're around others that are doing some of the similar things as far as the mindset. Not necessarily the same type of business, but just to know that someone else stepped out on faith. Someone else is praying over their business when they walk through the door. Um, just to know that there are others like us, you know, 
it, it's almost like uh, in the movie Lion King, you know, it's like, oh, there's more, you know, there's somebody else like me, and, you know, when you, you find somebody that, that looks like you, you're just excited um, to know that you're not out here alone, and that's just what God does, he's not going to leave us, and he did that by giving us others to um, reaffirm us, and so I, I really appreciate that, that you have a support system or family or culture. You know, it is what it needs to be for each person. So I appreciate that. So we're going to find out more about Kingdom Business Leaders. And we're going to also talk more to Courtney about um, her um, financial advising over at Edward Jones. So I'm going to do a brief announcement and I'm going to ask our panelists to check the chat to see if there's any questions. Um, anything that you want to add into the chat, um, this will get a great opportunity to do so before we come to our next set of questions. So I kind of want to talk to um, our, our viewers. I just want to thank everyone kind of because we got some more information and I just want to make sure that I do this. Um, the AK Legacy Foundation um, is an organization. We are founded on Christian principles and we teach financial literacy and we do business development. Um, and we know that everyone learns different, everyone does everything um, different. So we try to find different ways to meet the needs of those that need our services in our community. And so we're asking everyone to go to our YouTube channel. If you're not currently on YouTube watching, uh, when, when we get off the Zoom, go to our YouTube channel, like, subscribe, leave a comment, um, ask a question. I will make sure that any question that you didn't get answered here um, live on the show, that I'll get it, I'll forward it to our panelists so that they can reach back out to you and get those concerns answered. We are on Instagram as well. And every Wednesday at 11, we have Ask the Expert. Um, we have a different topic every week. But I tell you, God is so good. He is so awesome that he has blessed this community, this culture, this safe place to have where we can have open dialogue, whether we agree or disagree. This is a place where we can get our um, concerns met. Um, this, our website is up here on the screen. If you could go and view, view the website, check it out, see what it is that we have to offer, see what you can offer to the foundation. Um, we, of course, we are accepting donations and any donation that is given, we truly appreciate it. Right now, we're gearing up for our youth business summit. Um, we do have a foundation charity sale going on right now. Every item that is purchased, it goes strictly um, to the youth and it helps us with the business summit that is coming up. So get plugged in. Um, we have some organizations that you see listed here. We have something for everyone, whether you're a youth, a man, a woman, black, white, purple, it doesn't matter. We got something for you and I'm sure you have something for us. So this is just an opportunity for you guys to share. And remember every donation is tax deductible. Um, and so I'm gonna, we're gonna go over and start on the next one, which is, just kind of keep it real. Y'all know this is our favorite topic, right? Money, finances. Where is the money? I was going to say, show me the money. I was like, you know, I'm going to be a little bit more professional. And I'm going to say, where is the money? <laughs> so uh, one of the first things I want to talk about, uh, since we are in COVID-19 season, and uh, I guess every generation has this thing that happens that comes along that separates us. Either we're going to find out who's prepared, who's not, who really, who they are, you know, it's just always something that shakes us up. And so we're going to talk about the money. So one of the things I want to talk about is since COVID-19, all this government funding that's been coming through, is it being put to good use? I know this is going to probably be a matter of opinion. Our next set of questions are going to be more geared toward what you're actually doing. But I do want to ask this question. Do you think that the money that the government is giving, I'm trying to be careful about my words when it comes to the government. Um, do you think it's being put to good use? Is it getting to the neighborhoods and to the communities that need it most? And we'll start with Courtney. Um, you're right, that, that question is going to be dependent on who it is that's answering. But um, I'm going to say it's unique to each and every family, but the, the piece I wanna put emphasis on is you ask if it's getting to the right communities. You know, I've always been um, an advocate for my own community. And, you know, we saw this with the first round of stimulus checks. You know, there were a large part of, of our community and other um, communities of color that don't have direct deposit because of how they file, you know, their income taxes. 
And so when it comes to getting the money to the right places, I believe a lot of those communities, a lot of our brothers and sisters were the ones who were in greatest need of the stimulus checks. They were backed up, and they didn't have direct deposit access to get to them. So, yes, I think that the government money is marked for a good use. Whether or not it's getting to the community that needs it the most is a different question because there's a lot of pipeline between the issuance of the checks and getting them to the hands of those who need them. And so whether or not it's being used by the individual families in the best way possible, I'm going to say yes because what's best for the Peyton family is going to be different than what's best for the Martin family. And so there's that accountability piece that Brother Darren talked about you have to be able to say that I take this uh, $1,200 or 1700 I think, if you had kids, and use it to its best ability. So that that's where the money is. It's out there. Now, the uses of it are going to be unique to each person. I think the government is doing a great job, or they did, rather. There's a little hold up right now, getting the money out in the beginning. <laughs> but uh, for those people who really need it most, you know, the marginalized are always uh, – in my heart, and that's that's the reason why you know I do my best to be a bridge and bring awareness and bring knowledge. Cause you know I just told my husband this last night. We are there's not a time in history when our community has not had to play catch up. When have we ever been able to say you know after we paid all our obligations and paid to the sharecropper, then to the to the tenant to the tenant farmer, do we have enough to say you know? And I know that's going where you didn't ask us to go, but oh, where is the money? I, I think. It's there, but can we put our hands on it? It's a whole whole other different thing when you talk about whether or not our community has the same access to upward economic mobility as the others do. That's right. enough no. for me. No, no, no. I, I totally get it. Um, I totally get it. And like I said, this is a place where we want to, you know, we respect that. I mean, it's just, you know, it, just to be to be honest and to be truly honest, you know, it it. it I see it, especially when people come and they want to apply for certain things. The list is so long of what they need to get done to even just apply. We're not even talking about press and submit. They don't even have the things that they need to apply. And so that leads into my question um, for you, Darren. When I say, where's the money? Is there some system, some magical potion out there that we can go and push it that's going to tell us everything that we need about our situation so that we can at least apply for the money. Well, you know, I'm going to come from more of an internal standpoint <clears throat> because, you know, my mindset has always been that I'm not going to sit around waiting for the government or anybody else to do what they need to do for me because I believe that I was born for a purpose and God equipped me with everything I would need for that assignment. And he knew that I would be in COVID-19 when he, when, he, when he gave birth to me, gave life to me. And so not, not neg negating what the government is doing and not doing, but I think if we really, really um, teach our children and our older 40 and 50 year old children as well, that stop looking on the outside and start looking on the inside. Your father God has given you the power to gain or create wealth. The word create means to produce something that's never existed. Right now, where the money is, the money's inside you, you know. And so if you want to show me the money, then you need to dig within yourself and cultivate what God, Father God has put inside you. The word cultivate means to develop what's already in you. And so I'm passionate about getting people to get out of them what's already in them and, and show it to the world because it's inside you. You know, so many people, you know, that, that's probably why I'm not in politics because I'm not trying to create more employment. I'm about deployment. Deploying the gift that God puts inside you is going to create wealth so that people start chasing you, you know? And so I believe that when you become known for your craft, your skill, and you do it in an innovative, creative way, which is innovation is ruling right now. You know, it's good to have skill and character, but innovation is ruling right now. That's clearly obvious that people will chase you when you become known in an expert or, 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 king of your category, so to speak. And so, you know, I, I just feel that I have no control over what the, what the government does, but I do have control over when I get on my knees. I do have control when I talk to my father. I do have control when the Holy Spirit inspires me with a witty invention that, and, it's, and that's one of the reasons why, and I won't get into the race thing, but that's one of the reasons why I, I'm very passionate as a black man, as a black leader, as a public figure, influencer, 
about my, my, my pride as a, as a man, but I realized that you have to know your fight. My fight is to empower people so that we become a force to be reckoned with rather than me waiting on you to do something for me. I'm sorry, I'm getting out. But anyway, that's, that's my views. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it, it needs to be said. And so key that you said at the very beginning that <clears throat> you're not waiting. Um, and I think that kind of goes hand in hand. If, if there's anything out there for us that the government is releasing and if you're in a proper place to possess it, get, take it. Um, if, you, if you're not, then, you know, creating solutions and, and thought processes to change that is so very key. And like you said, you're not waiting. And so a lot of times people hear that and they, and they instantly, and I guess this would be my question for Kiera, people instantly feel like they're being um, fought against. Um, so at what point do we take responsibility for our finances if we don't have the opportunities, uh, such as like Courtney mentioned, that we're so disenfranchised, we, we always have to play catch up. So what about the mindset of money when we do get it? Are we doing the right things with it? So I, I think for me, I think it all starts in the mindset. So what is your, um, in your opinion, your facts, anything you want to share with us in regards to this topic, where is the money? Well, um, in terms of mindset, I, I feel like, um, you know, there's some things that, that we have to do um, to, to make sure that we're in the place that we can receive what it is that God has for us. You know, I'm, I mean, and I mean, there are things that are basic, like, like tithes and offering. You know, there are things that are, are, are basic, like, you know, keeping your heart pure so that your blessings can flow. And um, I'm saying that because, you know, in this season, it's there, I, I don't believe that there's any magic formula, you know? I mean, there are some things that we can do to, um, to set in motion, you know, um, the blessing from God and, and, the, and the release of, of, you know, wealth in our lives. But at the same time, you know, there's, no, there's not a magic pill you know, um, it, it's really, an, it's an individual walk. It's something that we all have to um, self-discover, you know, what it is that I can do, what is, it, what is it that I should be doing, and especially be prayerful about, you know, is there anything that I'm not doing that could, that, or something that I am doing that is hindering, you know, my blessings from flowing? Because I'll be honest with you, um, from the beginning of, of this pandemic, you know, my husband and I had flourished. You know, and, it, and it, to the degree that it didn't make sense. But what we understood was it was seeds that we have been sowing over time. And, and when it's harvest time, there's nothing that can disrupt your harvest. You know, COVID-19 came, but it, it, for us, God said it was our time. <laughs> and so, you know, so it's really a, a personal thing. You have, we have to look within ourselves and say, okay, are we doing, you know, what we, what, God called us to do? Are we obeying God? Are we, do, are we being good stewards over the finances that he's put in our hands to manage? Because if, if we are, you know, then, then he said, he, he said um, Isaac sowed in famine and, and he reaped a har harvest where, you know, other people were starving. And so I feel, I, I believe, and I, I know that God is not a respecter of persons and he is, is not, um, he's a good father. He's not, he, he wants to get blessings into our hands. He wants to get resources into our hands. And so I, I you know, ultimately, you know, we, we really have to look to him as our source and our sole provider and watch those other things come into play and, and then, um, and watch him use the government are used, you know, in some cases, you know, people that we have instant stars on the internet, you know, there are different things that God is causing to pour in the blessing, but we have to be prepared, you know, in our hearts and in our, in our mindset to receive what it is that he's prepared for us, because there is a divine transfer that's supposed to take place. Well, are you in position to receive it? Right, right. Being in position, that is so key. And so Courtney, I'm going to ask you one more question. Um, she said, in position to receive. Tell us a little bit about some of the products that you, let's say a person hasn't started doing anything. They're a business owner, small business owner, and they haven't done anything. Um, they don't have a 401k. They don't have nothing to fall back on. They're just kind of doing business and paying bills. What product or service do you recommend, um, you know, them considering? 
Well, I first, you know, I always tell everybody when I talk to them because I'm not a product sales person. I am not a stockbroker. I am your relationship investment advisor. So um, when I recommend products to my clients, I do it on a personal basis. So I get to know them. I'm a major relationship person. So before I'm an investment advisor, I am a Christian. I'm a wife. You know, I have to get to know my clients. But to be very generic, if no one, if someone rather has, has not begun to plan for their retirement, then for business owners, there are several ways that we can start that. You know, there is the simple retirement plan for business owners that allows that owner to contribute more than you would, you know, in a in a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA. <coughs> there are options for them to include their employees if they want to. Um, there is the SEP IRA for business owners that allows them to exclude employees based on certain restrictions. So there are a lot of different solutions that I offer. Um, people want to know, well, if you've never started to plan for retirement, then we want to be intentional and purposeful about doing that. We don't want to say, well, I don't know if I can. I'm going to help you. <laughs> I'm going to look at where you are help you set your goal and determine whether or not it's realistic that we get there. And if we have to, we'll go back and revisit and adjust that goal. But the goal is to start, right? I always like to say you can build anything, but you got to have the bricks. You know, I have to have something to work with to help you lay your financial foundation. I say get started. You know, I always ask people after I talk to them and I tell them a little bit about what I do. I help you pay for your kids' college education. Is it a crazy idea for us to have a conversation? Is it a crazy idea for us to have a meeting? Get the question going. They think, you know what, I probably do need to come and sit and talk with you. Boom. Let's be innovative and have a Zoom because I don't want to catch the Rona. So <laughs> let's have a Zoom meeting so I can see your smile and you can see mine. No mask needed. You know, it's not a crazy idea. you got to have the conversation because I like to say you don't want to retire and have to be a Walmart greeter. Now, if you want to do it, go on. That's wonderful. Those are some of the nicest people I've ever talked to when I go in the store. But let that be an option. If you just don't have anything else to do with your time, you go there and you do that because you want to, not because you have to, because all you got is Social Security, and your kids have their kids, and they can't help. You understand what I'm saying? Right. That, like uh, Brother Darren said, what's in you, the ability to take control and tell your money what to do instead of, it telling you to run to the Longhorn, you know, every time you feel like you want to celebrate. Right, right, right. And Darren, that's so key. That kind of brings me back. I know we're on finances a little longer, but hey, it's mentioned in the Bible a lot of times. So I guess we got a lot of opportunities to talk about money. So Darren, <laughs> doesn't one thing like she said, letting it be an option. So what about the people that don't know what they're supposed to be doing and they've spent, they've spent years doing this one particular thing only to find out that they're not satisfied or this is not what they're supposed to be doing because if it's not what you're supposed to be doing, chances are it's not being very profitable either. So how do you or what what um, for your um, the KBL, for the Kingdom Business Leader, how do you help people just even figure out what they're supposed to be doing? Well, you have to understand, first of all, there's a truth that we must first understand. You know, um, like with racism, all this is coming out now, but it's been going on. So, so there's, a, there's something far greater than racism that's been going on that we need to bring out to the light. Everybody else come out of the closet, let me bring this out of the closet. You were born to rule, but they programmed you to fail. Going to recess was just programming you to take a break after so many hours of work or working from the, from the field or the factory or wherever. So you were born by God to rule, but you were programmed to fail. So with that being said, understand that God has an internal GPS inside you before GPS existed. And that GPS is connected to your desires and your passions. So at Kingdom Business Leaders, what we do is we help you focus on what's already in you, the desires you have. That's why the word of God says, I will give you the desires of your heart. And also, so it's like, um, it's like those, um, <laughs> when, you, when you see people on the beach with those metal detectors looking for different treasures, what is a treasure in you? And that treasure is simply connected to your passion, you know, because God made you, he made you to have a desire to be passionate about certain things. So you want to do it. You know, it's like men would not populate the world because it's too painful. We wouldn't do that. So we gave that to women because, you know, we wouldn't, there would be no people here. 
So, so just as God made sex pleasurable so that we would want to reproduce, he made your passion, your dream, your goal, your desire in you as a GPS to make you drawn to certain things so that you say, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and so I always tell people, Act, what do you want to do? What do you like doing? Father God is so awesome. I heard Kiara saying our father provides for us. He's so awesome. He's basically saying you can do what you want to do. And so what is it you want to do? What is it that thing that you would want to do? And I guess you have to define Pat. Passion is the thing that you want to do, even if you were sentenced the rest of your life to do it for free. That is like Ecclesiastes says, to do what you love doing, that's the gift of God. And so a lot of people make the second mistake. They say, well, well there, and I already know what I love doing. Well, then, then I would warn you or, or caution you to not do what you want to do or only for money, because money, you know, right there in Revelation, where it says the, the adulterers and the whoremongers are going to hell, well, the greedy and the covetous are going to hell too. And so we make money more than what it's supposed to be. And what I mean by that is that if you're passionate about something and you've identified that, then say, well, now that I know what I want to do, how can I do that thing in such a way that it will bless people? Because money will chase you when you, money is simply a solution for solving a problem. And you will say, well, I already know somebody that has a delivery service. I already know somebody who does what I do. But we haven't seen it the way you're going to do it. You have a certain, like millennials say, you have a certain swag. You have a certain style. You have a certain way that you do what you do that only you can do it and we get it when you do it. You know, like my sister Courtney, you know, I can't wait to collaborate with her because guess what? We know financial advisors, but it's not the way she's going to say it. You know what I'm saying? And so we have an obligation to not only define what's in us, but then go and refine that. You follow what I'm saying? And then serve that to the world. So yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it is simply looking within yourself and helping you. All we do is help people. We're, we're the mirror. I'll say like this. The mirror doesn't make you black or white, rich or poor, small or short. The mirror just reflects who you already are. And so kingdom business leaders is just a mirror that you look into and say, oh, I'm going to find out who I am. And we just help you do what you call to do, you know? Right, right. And, if, and so that is one thing that, um, you know, finances, it's just a tool. And I think when we we revert to that and, we, and we're not so busy chasing it, but we're doing what we're passionate about and we're doing the things that we're supposed to be doing, the money will flow, the money will come because that is going to be a result of the work. And so I, I, I really think that we've learned a lot, got some nuggets out of all of that. And I, I, if you watch the replay, watch it again. Sometimes you have to watch something more than once so that you can get a full understanding of it and being passionate about it, finding out what you're supposed to be doing, um, do some estate planning, doing investment planning, getting started, just getting started. And so that kind of stuck with me. So when Courtney said getting started, I instantly thought about working out. Um, you know, everybody said, well, I didn't eat bad all week. I'm just going to start over Monday. It's, it's like we're always waiting on Monday to start over. And, you know, Monday never comes. And so when it comes to finances, just get started. So we're going to bring that right into fitness. Let's just get started. Um, so we're going to start with fitness. And so physical and mental fitness, I'm always teaching what I call financial fitness. And um, because that's what's easy for me to do. Now, if I had to be a fitness instructor, we, we, it wouldn't be good. So we're going to talk about fitness. So, so Darren, I was out there being nosy, and I, you know, I like to see who my panelists are. And I saw you had something that said fit over 50. So first, we know you're now you're over 50 because you got it out there. And um, so, <laughs> so what is this about being fit over 50? Tell us about that. I'm, oh, not your life yet, doesn't so start I'm not there yet, yet, so I'm going to need you to tell me about being fit over 50. So, <laughs> Well, it, you know, I really originally hadn't planned on putting it out there, but, you know, God's very tough on me because I'm, a, I'm called to make good leaders great. So he's got he's to give me a hard time. And so, you know, I believe that you're, the, the wealth of all the years and experience, the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, all make you who you are. So, you know, I think you really start to enjoy life at 50. I mean, because you, you know, you've at some point in time, you begin to realize that you have more years behind you than in front of you. And so you really start to maximize those. And so I think fit over 50 uh, is simply being whole, wholeness, wellness. And I, I, it, I started the Facebook page only because I felt that it was not, I thought it would be more effective to share my personal 
challenges and struggles with other people because I know I'm not the only one struggling with, you know, challenges, you know, that uh, we have to be fit and to maintain our fitness or to achieve our fitness over 50. And, you know, I think that it comes from a lot of prejudice uh, and discrimination in another way. Um, we judge people because they don't sin the way we sin. You know, and I think especially in the, in the kingdom of God, um, pastors, leaders, you know, we will look down upon someone who's a crackhead or who's an abuser, but we'll sit in front of the TV and eat Oreos one, two o'clock in the morning watching a movie and then strung out like a crackhead. So we, st we have to stop judging people because they don't sin the way we sin. Mm -hmm. And so God, the Holy Spirit began to challenge me. It's like, Darren, wait a minute. You know, there's no difference. You strung out with the remote in your hand, you know, getting your fix. And the other person, you know, strung out crack. Now there's a, we know there's a significant difference, but what I'm saying is it was just me journaling my personal challenges um, because the, the enemy knows that he may not, we're mature enough, most of us as kingdom business leaders, we're not going to rob somebody, kill somebody, rob a bank or do something stupid like that. But what we are going to do is we're going to get depressed. We're going to get discouraged or we're going to be, um, we're going to gossip or we're going to start mess. Or, you know, or we're going to watch that TV to the, to, to it's like, you know, we claim we don't have prayer time. We have not time to pray, but we watch. And I got to say this, y'all. I'm sorry. I am hooked. <laughs> My wife is to blame. <laughs> you know, I got to be real. I used to talk about her watching these home re repair shows. Look, she laughing at <laughs> these home repair shows. I was like, would you turn that off? It's just, ugh. And so I watched them and I start. You know, and if y'all don't know, we just been through two floods and three floods in two years, you know, you know, and that's a whole nother testimony. But so I started learning how to fix the house and I'm like, geez, I was like, you know what? So I, not, and the, the way they get you, Candy, is before the one show ends, kind of like those mystery murders, they already start the second one. So you don't have time to get up and go to the bathroom or do anything else. So it's all <laughs> her fault. It's, it's, it's all her fault, <laughs> you know. So I start watching these shows and I, and I realized, wait a minute. The Holy Spirit said, you, you're infringing upon my time. Mm -hmm. And I had to realize that the reason why I couldn't get up with my goal to make it at 4.30 in the morning, every morning, is because I watched that reality, not reality, that, that home show that you had me watching. And so <laughs> and I expected every year around Christmas time, she's going to get in the Hallmark mode. Man, I'm going I'm to be there with her. We coming up with our chocolate, you know. But I didn't expect it, like, in December, I mean, July, you know. But anyway, so, yeah, that all came out of, my personal struggle because I believe that transparency is the key to intimacy. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, especially a lot of our brothers are not intimate, we only, we stand by ourselves because we're not, we're afraid to be transparent with our challenges and our struggles. And so I found as a leader, when I tell you that, look, yeah, I'm in a position of leadership. God has blessed me with influence. God has given me favor in certain arenas, but guess what? I have challenges. If I don't wear deodorant, this is going to be a problem for my wife. You know, and so I just felt that by sharing and being transparent, it creates of other people saying, yeah, you know what? I'm not so bad. And I got one more thing to say. It, it, or if, and, and it's about what you just mentioned earlier about the finance and the fitness is that a lot of times um, we, we get I, I would get on myself because I say I'm a workout every morning. I'm getting up at 430 by 530. I'm done. OK, and so I get up three mornings. But that fourth morning, I wouldn't do it. And I'll have this heaviness or this. This, this, um, this feeling of, um, oh, like accusation or I didn't do it. I didn't keep my word to myself. And the Holy Spirit began to show me that, wait a minute, you, you make your confession. You know what? I didn't do it every day, but my confession is I'm doing more often than not. Mm -hmm. And when I say I'm doing more often than not, it took the pressure off me like, yeah, well, you a liar. No, I didn't make it five days a week, but I sure got three hours. I mean, I got three days and I am doing it more often than not. And so when I realized that, wait a minute, I am doing good. You know, and so the next week I do better. And when I mess up, it's just the thing. Look, we had some of these rolls. I ate the roll and I enjoyed it. And I <laughs> might get another one. I'm not going to walk in condemnation, you know. So anyway, I don't know what that means for anybody else, but I hope that helps somebody. Right. And I, and I heard that celebrate the small things. So, and I, am, I know I'm guilty of that. Um, I have this goal set and I get 90% of the goal done and I'm, I spent all my energy beating myself up about the 10% that I didn't do that I forget to be grateful and to celebrate the 90. And so um, that, yeah, that, that did it for me. That, that's it. Celebrate. Okay. The one up. Can I say something else too? Yeah, sure. Sure. 
Well, you know, my wife and I just experienced this um, 24 hours ago. Um, we, um, we were doing some spiritual warfare. And as a result, you know, you know, we're focused, we're praying intensively, you know, we shut the, I mean, we, 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 we bowed it. And we didn't know it. She, she actually, she said one day we was just like, just like, she was tired. And then I'm usually the one bouncing around like a rabbit and I was tired. And I was just like, we just said, you know what? We're not going to walk in condemnation because we didn't get none of our goals done. We got one thing out of her 10 done. And then we realized, I think she helped me realize it was yesterday. Wait a minute. Because of the victory we got for the for spiritual warfare, and because of all the turmoil in the spirit realm, we didn't realize that we were physically tired, and that's why we were sleeping. We just slept like two days, just like 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 lagging and dragging. And so the enemy would have you think to be condemning yourself when we didn't realize that we had already gotten a victory in the spirit realm. So our natural bodies were tired, and so there's a connect. It's like, wow, what if we didn't, well, what if she didn't, rec I'm going to give her the credit. What if she didn't recognize that, wait a minute, we've been doing spiritual warfare. That's why our physical bodies are tired. So for me to go out here talking when I'm going to ride my bike or run a mile, I need to stay, I need to sleep. I need to rest and not be condemned because of what happened in the spirit realm and we got to victory. So I think just discernment, you know. Right, right. Not beating ourselves up, just getting back, starting over. You know, that brings me back to um, any day could be Monday, uh, which means we're just going to start over. And so, Courtney, my question, my next question is for you in relates to financial fitness. What does that look like for you? Um, yeah, I just told my husband last night, um, he was talking about buying a steak, and I said, we're not in a place. Not because we can't, <laughs> but that's what I think about financial fitness. Just being a good steward. There are lots of things that we could do and we probably want to do, but it just isn't the wisest decision. And, you know, the way I think about money really goes against a lot of the people who are in my industry. You know, it ain't about that for me because I believe that once we take care of whatever obligations we have, we're supposed to give everything to help those who don't have, you know. So in the vein of being a good giver. That's what financial fitness looks like to me, giving to people who can't take care of it for themselves, but then also making wise decisions. You have to think about um, the future in the sense that if I make this purchase today, am I going to be asking myself, you know, was this a wise purchase in three, four, five weeks or six months? Am I going to be like, you know what, I wish I had not spent $400 doing this, that, or the third. And, you know, it kind of, to me, ties to the stimulus. You understand what I'm saying? If you spend your money now and then you waiting on the stimulus, could you have kept your money and not be looking toward the stimulus? And so when I think about financial fitness, you know, it's, it's multifaceted in that you've got to be a good steward, but make your money work for you. That's what fitness is, you know, lifting the muscles and, and, and getting gains and becoming lean. A lot of folks don't want to be lean. We want to live lavish financially when right. when living lean, you know, can be to to our benefit. And so it, it's multifaceted. It's not just one thing. It's not just saving at the bank. It's investing in other things to make your money work for you. There are two ways to make money. Work real hard or make your money work real hard. It's one of two. One, two things. And it, it goes back to those desires, I believe, and the things that are within us. And Brother Darren said it a couple of questions ago um, about being able to go and get things and do stuff on your own. Made me think about my granddad. He lived to be well over 90 years old. But James Brown was one of his favorites. And one of my favorite things that James Brown ever said was, I don't need no man to give me nothing. Just open up the door. I'll get it myself. <laughs> so when he talks about, you know, your your inward ability, I'm always, you know, going around the house saying that, you know, I don't need no man to give me nothing. Open up the door. I get it myself. And so when you talk about even physical, mental, financial fitness, we have the innate ability to go after whatever it is in these categories for ourselves, but it takes a measure of fitness takes a measure of fitness, watching what you consume financially. I can't buy all the Brahmin bags, even though I like those purses. I can't eat at Outback all the time, even though that's my favorite restaurant. I'm watching what I consume. You know, I'm watching what I take in because I want to be financially fit. It goes for the physical, the mental, and the financial. Consumption is a word that we should always explore more when we talk about being fit. 
consumption and fitness go together. What are you consuming? Is it conducive to you being fit, whether that's physical, mental, or financial? Right, right. So key, she said, you know, you can't consume everything. And so that's my next question for you. Uh, if that's going to bring me into my question for Kia so perfectly. Um, and I wanted you to speak on mental fitness you know, consuming what we consume. I just had this conversation with someone and I said, you may need to watch, kind of watch what you're watching on TV. Um, some of that is with your, con I, I didn't use the word consume, but I just said a lot of, you know, fake comes by hearing. And and I didn't want to, you know how to say, don't beat them up with the word. So, I, so what I did was I thank God for the wisdom. I just told them, I said, you know, when you watch all that a lot, a lot of that comes out in your conversation. And, and so I think what we consume does have a, uh, a spin on our mental fitness. So could you speak to that, um, Kia? Um, yes. Um, and well, the truth of the matter is it may not be all that you're, you're, you're taking in. Sometimes it's, what, it's just what you're focusing on. And so in terms of mental fitness, you know, and I'll just uh, talk about personal experiences, especially with COVID, you know, my kids had to come home. <laughs> and so, you know, that the daycare was out and school was out and I became a stay at home mom and a homeschooler at the same time. And um, what I found is that, you know, I had just gotten into the season. I have a two year old and I just got to the place where I was beginning to, to give me some time again. And here it is, I had to start pouring everything out into them again. And so um, I had to find or, or learn how to rebalance myself through through all of, um, you know, just the challenges of, of having kids at home, of trying to work at home, trying to teach at home and um, and stay stay on uh, schoolwork uh, for my seven year old. It's like I had to um, I really had to, you know, first give myself a break, not try to do everything and then also learn how to balance, you know, their time my husband's time and my time. And that's something that, you know, as a woman, you know, as a mom and, and as a wife that we, we have to constantly do anyway. But with the changing of seasons, changing of circumstances, you know, sometimes we have to reevaluate what, you know, our new norm is going to be. And so um, in terms of, of consumption, you know, I, I had to um, really, I, I, I found myself and my husband was talking about my HGTV breaks, you know, that was for me. That's what I used because I couldn't go to the movies. I couldn't, um, you know, we couldn't necessarily go out to get entertainment. And so that was the one little thing that I rediscovered because I, I mean, I didn't watch a lot of TV before COVID, <laughs> but that's what I found to bring me, bring me back home and give me a little bit of, mental you know, stability. yeah, mental stability, you know, while my house was, had, you know, my, my norms had changed. And so, um, you know, and at the same time, you know, where it, it, it gets to be sticky, and I say that um, is like, is, is particularly between, you know, a married couple, you know, I'm a night owl and he's a, a morning person. So I'm watching these shows late at night when he's trying to go to sleep and he got hooked and now he can't get up in the morning <laughs> when that's his best time to work. Right. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it's learning how to balance the, all those things out. And, um, you know, I, I, sometimes I just took my little, my, my iPhone out and I have to watch my little shows on, on, TV, on the, on the phone. But in, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's really making sure that, that you have a balance, you know, and, and that, you know, as my husband said earlier about not allowing other things to encroach on on your your time with the father your spiritual time you know then also giving that time and attention sometimes more you know when your children need more from you you know to them that they need during the day and then also you know at at some point being able to, to feed yourself you know what you need throughout the day and so it's at the end of the day i know sometimes it's overused but it's finding balance it's finding balance mm -hmm. we have to do that we have to do that for ourselves. And sometimes when we don't know what to do, we really have to see God and ask him what to do. And then at the end of the day, sometimes he might tell you, you need to talk to somebody, <laughs> you know, right. you might need some counseling. And so I'm sure there's a lot of people right now, especially with COVID-19, you know, there's some counselors making some, some, some serious money because people need that outlet. They need to free their minds and to free 
themselves from from the pressure of of whatever it is that they're not doing of the pressure of not having that job you know of the pressure of of being at home all the time with with you know even the your family you might love them but you might not want to see them 24 hours a day you know it's like there's a lot of adjusting and a lot of, of um, you know, um, flexibility that we have to have in, in terms of, you know, of our schedules and how, how things, we like things to be. You know, we have to be creative in some, some ways just to, to allow ourselves to breathe and to allow our families to have that, that time together or even finding areas where we can separate and get our own quiet time. And that's, a, that's something that we established in my household. We have quiet time. <laughs> some of them have nap time, some of them have quiet time, but at nap time and quiet time, everybody's quiet. And that, that it feeds us, <laughs> it feeds all of us. Right, and that's so good to have um, a routine, something in place. Uh, we have to have that mental break. And I'm with you. Um, I, AGTV, I watch it all the time. I don't get to watch TV that often, but when I do, that's the channel we're going to. And, and my <laughs> husband, Eddie, he's like, oh Lord, what you gonna build today? But in my mind, I'm watching these shows and I'm getting all these ideas, you know, I'm gonna do that, you know? So it's, it's very relaxing. So change the scenery, especially when you're watching the one when they go mm -hmm. to the different islands. Um, for, to, so for me, it's like, <laughs> I'm going to get to a vacation, so I'm going to watch it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's so key that we have a mental break. Um, it's key that we have good stewardship for our financial fitness and get the workout on. If it's just 10 minutes a day, start somewhere and build your way up. Do some level of fitness for your, um, for your body. You know, we, we want to have, um, it does us nothing to have all the money and can't, and can't enjoy it. So we have to have, you know, that financial fitness, that accountability part. We need to have our health, you know, health is wealthy. So we want to make sure that we have our, our health. So I want to bring everybody's attention to the screen real quick. Um, we have our, in our AK Legacy Foundation, we're, like I said earlier, we're wrapping up for our YES, uh, which is the Youth um, Business Summit, where the youth will have a chance to come before some judges and pitch their business. Um, some of them are already in business. Some of them are wanting to start a business. And so this gives us a platform to help them to do so. So I'm asking everyone to go to the website, check out our, um, the shopping fundraiser. Um, Christmas is coming up. Hey, they got Christmas trees in the store. So why not? Start buying the gifts now. You know, be, be wise with your spending. Don't wait to the last minute, spend all this money. Go to the website, do two things. Purchase something for someone or for yourself and you'll get a tax donation clip for every purchase that is made. So we're going to, um, we want to invite you guys to do that. So go to the website, check it out. Don't find anything you like. Don't worry about it. You can make, leave a donation. Um, so I want to make sure that I, I give, we're going to give our panelists an opportunity to give us their closing remarks. So I put on the screen the contact information um, for Courtney, uh, her phone number and website, and the, and the same as well for Darren and Kiara. Um, so we want to make sure that you do that. And for those that are on audio, I want to go ahead and read the, the way, the best way to contact them. The best way to contact Courtney, her number is 601-261-3747. 601-261-3747. And Courtney is a financial advisor with Edward Jones. Um, you can find out more about their, um, their services that they have to offer at edwardjones.com. I'm going to bring you over to Darren and Kiera. Their best form of contact for them is to go to their website, which is www.readyforincrease.com. Just as it says, readyforincrease.com. Go on the website, check it out, get your questions answered, um, leave a comment on the Contact Us page, do whatever you need to do to get in touch with these individuals so that you can at least start, have the conversation, get your questions answered. You never know. Um, where that will lead. Um, I don't think that it's an accident that you're watching this broadcast live or if you're watching the webcast by replay, whatever the case may be. For some reason, God ordained it for you to be here on today. And so take full advantage of it. You know, make, reach out, get some questions answered. You never know where things may lead. So I want to give our panelists an opportunity to um, give us some closing remarks. And you know some some things. So tell us about kind of whatever you want to give us about some information about your upcoming events, 
um, some charity work that you're doing, words of encouragement, something about your business that's new and exciting that you want to share. So take a, a minute or two and, and give us some closing remarks. We'll start with, with Courtney, and then we'll go with Kiara, and then um, Pastor Darren, you will go last. But there's one other thing I would like for you to do, Pastor Darren, um, after you give us the, your, your spin on your closing remarks. So close us out in a brief prayer, praying for those that are in business, um, that we continue to use godly wisdom. So if you can do that for us as well. So Courtney, go first. No problem. I had to unmute myself. Um, I first just want to say thank you for the opportunity to come on the panel, to be a part of the Ask the Experts. Um, this was very exciting for me. I like to talk, and um, <laughs> talking unscripted, though, is, is something that I don't typically do, but this was so much fun. Um, one closing remark that I just I want to add just about my business is that, you know, for the professional piece, I am licensed in all of these states, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, Texas, Florida, New York, a whole host of places. So if there is a business owner that would like help with strategies for their business in one of those areas, it's not a bad idea for us to have a conversation. But then also, don't ever think that it's too late for you to start, because if we are purposeful and intentional, we can reach the goals that you have set for yourself, but you have to first be willing to have the conversation. That's it. All right. Thank you, Courtney. I really, truly appreciate you taking time out of the middle of your day. Um, I know that you have small children as well. Um, I, my hat is off to you and Kiara, um, thank God that, you know, my, I, I, I'm a grandmama now, so that's all somebody else's problem now, so <laughs> I'm just there to provide ice cream now, so this is, this is great, but so I am in prayer for you guys, you know, I just can't imagine, um, I saw a meme the other day that had a little girl, she could have been about four or five in front of a computer with a whole bunch of wires, and she's trying to figure out how to send an email, and I was like, this is going to be interesting. And so I pray God speed to you both that you have the tools and resources that you need to, for the, um, the, the homeschooling or, or however the resources are needed so that you got, your kids can get the education that they need. And it's so key what Courtney said, it's never too late to start. So mm -hmm. a lot of parents that are feeling defeated with this technology, hey, it's never too late. You need to dive into a class. Um, real quick, real quick. So, uh, Kiara is, you know, give us your closing remarks, any upcoming events, any charities, anything that you would like to share with us. All right. First, I do want to say thank you for having me today. Um, and, and as with Darren, sometimes he gets called. I don't really, I rarely get called. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to leave him out of it, but I knew he was going to get jealous. So we just, we <laughs> let him come on, but go ahead. <laughs> No, I do. I really appreciate uh, this chance just to share. Um, and I, and what I want to do is really just encourage um, everybody that's on the call um, that, you know, um, it, this is a, a really good time to reimagine what you like your life to look like. And so one of the things that, that the Lord has encouraged me this year is to dream again and 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 to dream um and, and just really to to go back and and some prayers i've seen over time answered you know and i and 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 but i didn't come up with the new dream and the new the new vision for my life and so that's something that's that's really important but especially in this time it's like we've got an opportunity like we've never had before to reimagine what we want our lives to be like and that's on purpose you know with god but it's like you know we 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 can have a new vision and a new um uh, you know recreate what it is that we like to see and what it is that we like to to experience in our lifetimes and so i just encourage everyone you know just to 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 do that to have that time of of self-discovery and finding you know remembering some things that maybe you have forgotten and going back and and just reflecting on those things that god has done but then also you know um collaborating with the holy spirit on the things that you want to do in the future because there's so much that i believe that has been a portion for us and especially in this time you know this is a it's a key time for reset you know to reset our goals reset our, our, our um, futures to re reset what we'd like to see God do and for the, to manifest in our lives. 
Right, and to reach that, it's just so encouraging to know that it's never too late to start. It's never too late to start over. Um, that is so encouraging, and to dream again. I mean, I, I know if I could speak for me. I have been like, oh my God, like I got ignited with some new ideas. And it was just the fact that we were able to focus, um, to reprioritize, and just to sit back and not beat ourselves up because we're not in the hustle and bustle of the day. We're actually just sitting on the porch, you know, watching the cars go by like when we were kids, you know, um, you know, just just enjoying it and just relaxing for a minute and then the ideas were able to flow and so i i truly appreciate that encouragement to dream again so i know now i'm not like i'm not crazy i you know i got all these new ideas so if there's somebody else out there just like me thinking of something new to do and we're never too late to start over or to restart or to finish some things that we started when we were younger and we kind of put on the back burner so that is so encouraging so um pastor darren have, you have the floor. Okay. Well, like Kira said, I just thank you for the opportunity. Even though most times I get called to speak, I haven't been out. So it's like, <laughs> you know, it's just like this is the closest thing to being on the stage now. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to get back out. But um, but thank you so much. Um, and we need more of this. So <clears throat> as far as what um, my wife and I, are, our biggest project right now is. Um, launching and building and growing and expanding the kingdom business leaders. Um, I said years ago that prophetically that the end time movement would be in the marketplace ministry. And we're seeing that right now. So I always tell people, don't judge the way it happened. Just know it's going to happen. Now, because of COVID-19, we have people now more than ever required and um, starting their own businesses, home base and going online. And so it's just another day for us in the kingdom business leaders because we've been saying this for years because of the grace and the revelation of God. And so I thank God we're able to be that, that resource, that guide to take you by the hand, step by step, whether you're starting a business or whether you already are in business to increase, to expand, to grow. And now we're telling people to automate. And so, um, so you can walk away from the thing and, and you know, put it on autopilot. So um, our biggest focus is providing that community of um, like-minded kingdom business leaders that and I think our main focus is not, um, you know, it's not it's not so much about a contract, but it's more about a covenant, because a covenant is that what I have becomes yours and mutually beneficial. We don't let anybody in the network or the family or the community that's not referred by somebody else. And this is how we keep cray cray out. That family people that you know, I got enough family for craziness, and you know, so we everybody's referred. And so we have a level of accountability there. So if you are looking to grow, uh, launch, expand, um, you know, automate, multiply your business, and or you just need encouragement, accountability, you know, we tap on all those what we call the core four, the faith, the family, the finance, and fitness. And so that's what Kingdom Business Leaders is all about. Um, you can email me through, um, you know, on the website from Ready for Increase. Um, and uh, we're also on Facebook. So under um, Kingdom Business Leaders. And then just for everyone who's here um, attending today, if you are, um, I, I'd just like to you know, bless someone with, um, any, if you attended this, um, this session today, ask the experts, um, I would like to give you one of three gifts uh, and it's according to where you are. Uh, I'm a um, high ticket consultant, helping people with strategies on building, launching, growing their business. And so for some people, they may need a, um, a, a free strategy session on launching. Others may need a clarity call. They're trying to get clarity. Others may need a strategy call if they're already, you know, in the water, they've already launched. And so for whatever it is, it's a 30 minute session um, that, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. It's just a way to connect to and enhance or increase your business or your life in some capacity. And as far as upcoming events, um, we have an annual event we do the first week of every October. Uh, this is going to be the first year. It's going to be virtual as well as live. We'll have a limit on the live, but we'll be virtual. It's called Leader Shift. Um, and Leader Shift is basically an event that, um, that we host um, that is simply designed to propel good leaders to greatness, you know, going from good to great. And so, um, so basically, um, you know, that's what we're all about. Um, you know, um, I, I think the one thing I'm passionate about is is helping people recognize the greatness inside of them and then tell them, don't wait to be great. <laughs> it's, it's waiting for you. And so um, that's it. 
Okay, well, I, I, I thank each and every one of you for being guest panelists on today. I thank all of our viewers. I thank our supporters of the AK Legacy Foundation. Um, I pray that God continues to tremendously bless you. And I pray that we, um, we don't disappoint. I pray that when you look back on this and you see us a year or two from now, you see that we're actually putting things into motion, that we are um, moving forward. We're making sure that our communities are better, that financial literacy and business development has been wholeheartedly um, embraced and put into action, not just hearing. So everything that you've heard on today, take the part that applies to your life and apply it, apply the pressure, get it done. Take advantage of these complimentary sessions. Courtney stated that you can reach out to her and see if, um, see if you guys are a good fit, get some questions answered. Um, the, the Nets have offered a complimentary session. If you're not sure what you're, what you're supposed to be doing, take advantage of the clarity. If you already know what you're supposed to be doing, you're off and running, you just need some uh, a strategy to go to the next level, take advantage of it. If you arrived already, well, call again and make sure, you know, make that session and make sure you properly arrive, you know. So there's something for everybody. Take advantage of the session. Um, and then, like I said, don't forget to go to the AK Legacy Foundation, view our website, go to our YouTube channel, share. A lot of people are working during this time of day. We originally had this time due to everyone being sheltered in place. In the near future, we will we will revisit the time, but for right now, it's still at 11 o'clock a.m. on Wednesdays, and I truly, truly, truly appreciate each and one of our panelists for taking time out of their schedule. Um, and so that'll be it. Pastor Darren is going to close us out in prayer, and so that will be the last voice that you will hear um, on this webcast on today. So I pray that you all have a great day. God bless. Well, Father, we just thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, that it wasn't by coincidence that we've all met here today because we know coincidence is not in your word. We thank you, Lord, it was by divine design. And Father, I just, number one, pray a hedge of protection, Lord God, upon everyone assembled here and as well as our extended families. Thank you, Father, for traveling grace and the blood of Jesus that covers us, our children, our spouses. And Father, I thank you that you called us to be lights in a dark world and that you will cause our businesses, our models to be lights in our neighborhoods, the courthouse, the school um, houses, the arenas, Father. Thank you, Lord God, that this is truly our time. And Lord, where others are frantic and fearful and their hearts are failing because of fear, we thank you that you are showing yourself strong in ways, uncommon ways, and means that we ourselves have never seen. And Lord, we just acknowledge you. Forgive us for ignoring your voice and your still small promptings in the past, but thank you that we are listening now. Thank you, Lord God, that you're teaching our hands to fight and our fingers to war, that we will not back down, we will not be denied, and we will not be easily moved. Thank you that you give us the mentality of warriors for this end time move, that you are ready to move and you must, and you will move through us. We bind the enemy, all his tactics, his strategies, every evil plot and plan, we render it null and void. We, we bind the spirit of every monitoring spirit that comes to, to watch our progress with no good intent. Every evil eye, we poke it out now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for what you have done. Thank you for the vision and the dream, the desires and the goals that you've given us. Thank you that we are truly moving out. That it's not just our time, it's our turn. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.